What are you going to do within that month to be able to achieve that goal? And then put your benchmarks in place. That track on the show, episode 65. Hey, what's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of That Triathlon Show, the podcast presented by scientifictriathlon.com. I'm your host, Michael, and I'm back today with part two of my discussion with Simon Brierley. Last episode, we talked a lot about Simon's philosophy on triathlon training for the beginner, the improver, and the advanced triathlete, and today we're back with a discussion about goal setting, the importance of having goals and how to set them the right way, the smart way, and also about Simon's tips for self-coached athletes. How can you become a more effective self-coached athlete? Also, towards the end of the discussion, we have a pretty exciting announcement, so I won't spill the beans here, but uh, make sure that you listen throughout the interview to hear about that announcement, and I'll be back after the interview to tell you a little bit more about that. So without any further ado, here's Simon Briley and myself discussing goal setting and self-coaching. All right, I'm back with Simon Briley for part two of our interview, and we will start back right where we left off last time with talking a bit more about goal setting and going into the details there about who should do that, when should you do it, and how should you do it. So Simon, what are your thoughts? What should beginner athletes, sticking with our uh, classification of athletes as a beginner or improving or advanced, what, what should the beginner specifically do in terms of goal setting? Great. I just want to throw a really quick um, exercise out there. So you're listening to this podcast right now. Just think to yourself, have I got a goal? Ask yourself right now, have I got a goal? Doesn't matter what ability or level you're at. Ask yourself right now, have I got a goal? Okay, great. So as we talk through this, you then will start to plot yourself into these categories of the beginner, the improver, and the advanced athlete. And it may help you. It may not. Um, I'm not saying that I, I know everything or that this is the, the only way to do it. It's, everybody should have a goal. I believe everybody should have that vision, that target, that something that they're trying out to striving on. The beginners out there, I would suggest that you'd be looking at your goal to be as something very, very simple, very relaxed, very enjoyable, just as simple as I want to complete that local triathlon next year. I want to do that pool based 300 meter swim, 10K bike, 2K run. I want to do that next year. It's as simple as that. That's really, really straightforward. And then also looking at how you're going to be able to complete the training, complete the training aspect over, over that. The improver. The, the improver is now we're starting to be a little bit more serious. So we're, we're not just trying to complete the distance and actually just cross the finish line. We're actually now, want, we, we've crossed that finish line as a, as a beginner and we've gone, I could do that faster. So now we're starting to put the emphasis upon actually going faster or quicker or maybe even going longer. So look to, you're, you're training to perform now. You're training to actually perform your aspect. Remember on the beginner's side, I mentioned you're training to complete. Now on the improver side, we're training to perform. So more specific, we're looking at a goal that's going to be, um, it's going to be, I'm going to try and take half an hour off my time for that that Olympic distance, or I'm going to take half an hour off um, my half marathon time in particular. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about whether that's realistic a little bit later on. So, all, Can I take half an hour off my Olympic? <laughs> <laughs> As we say, we'll talk about that a little bit more realistic <laughs> approach. But this is where those improvers out there who answered the question earlier on, have you got a goal? How do I set that goal? And we'll come on to a little bit more guidance on that um, um, later on in, in this podcast. So you're looking to train to, to perform. And as we say, you may have a time in, in uh, goal as a time goal in, instead of a completing goal. The advanced athlete. Now, this is where um, Mikel was kind of uh, uh, 
his intentions were on the sense of um, is it realistic? Is is your goal realistic as uh, as an advanced athlete? And I use the the business approach of goal setting or target setting as the um, kind of the abbreviation of SMART. So we're looking at the S of the word SMART being specific, measurable for the M, achievable for the A, realistic for the R, and timely for the T. Yes, there's a lot of other analogies out there or um, phrases that you could utilize. This has worked well for most of my athletes that I, um, for all of my athletes that I work with, and that's the format that I like to use. So as an advanced athlete, you need to now start filling in these, and it's a lot more important conversation either with your coach or with yourself, and you're starting to set out these goals a lot more smart uh, within your training. You're training to win. So we've changed from that training to perform to training to win aspect. Great. So that's a, a good breakdown of, of the different things that go into, into goal setting for the different levels and how we move from a very simple, simple way of setting goals to becoming more, more specific with the smart aspect. So what, and you mentioned you're working with the coach as an athlete and the, the coach working with the athlete, of course. What goes into that discussion between an athlete and a coach when you, when you agree on a goal and when the athlete comes to you with a goal, perhaps? I, I use that opportunity as a coach with my athletes to get to know them a lot better, a lot more. So I use that within my induction. Uh, I sit down face to face or I have a, a Skype meeting with my athletes and it, it lasts a good a good hour where you're discussing those um, profile building of the athlete. But also this is very important. You're discussing the athlete's goal. So I mentioned the athlete's goal. It's not the coach's goal, it's the athlete's goal. And the coach would be looking, I'd be looking to actually support that or guide the athlete into a more structured, uh, um, smart goal in that, in, in that instinct. So we would be, the athletes in different uh, abilities would be looking into, to suggest their goals. I want to run a marathon next week. So then we start to slot that into those specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely aspects. And the, with the beginner, um, I, you don't necessarily need to discuss this with the coach, but I, I, I would actually take that back. I would actually back that up. If you have got a coach as a beginner athlete, or there's a, a coach down the, at the local triathlon club that you, you started to attend, share your, share your, your, um, goal. I want to do my first triathlon next, next week or next year or, um, in, in a month's time. Um, what, you know, what do you think of that? Cause that coach will actually come back to you and, and say, Hey, how are you getting on? And every week they may not be coaching you individually, but they'll, they'll, they'll check up on you and they'll actually encourage you. Even your training buddies will actually say to you, Hey, how are you getting on? Really looking forward to supporting you over your challenge. The improver side of things, I would say that this is actually athletes led. It's an athlete led conversation where the athlete will actually be saying, I want to go and do my first Ironman event uh, next August. And um, that would be, they may have a, an exact event in, in uh, so a location, uh, but we wouldn't necessarily be talking about a set time or a finishing time at this stage uh, within their within their goal structure it's not a, a time would not be involved in that discussion for their goal setting um uh, uh induction as we say the so it's a lot more athlete led athlete focused and um you you they're putting the onus upon the coach to get them there so once they've shared that goal with them the coach has turned around and said that's realistic. Yes, it's achievable. It's measurable. We can do it over the six months. We can't do it over six weeks, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it's all been narrowed down to that. And it's, it's a smart goal. So the, the coach will sit there and go, I am willing to take you through this and I'm willing to get you to that start line. Obviously they need to physically get themselves from the start to the finish line, but that's the onus upon the coach. And there would be. A, a real um, emphasis upon certainly with the improver on the on the advanced athletes that you would need to actually 
uh, as a coach, I would be looking at uh, reviewing these goals on an ongoing basis to make to give the confidence back to the athlete that they're on target to achieve this. So that's the ongoing coaching relationship that we talk about, um, that a lot of coaches talk about out there. And now that we've been talking about uh, goals for quite a while, let's uh, break it down really simply with three ex examples, one for each category of triathlete. So first, what would a good example beginner goal be? So, um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, completing your first triathlon. And the improver? Uh, the improver, let's look at um, potentially a goal, a time goal um, on the same course that you did as a beginner. And when you mentioned just previously about having the improver wanting to do their first Ironman, but not necessarily discussing times, is that because now they're going into a new distance? So even though they are an improver and they're moving up the distance, you don't know enough to be able to put that Uh, specific that measurable thing in terms of a time result is is that the thinking behind the, why you said that with not having a a time goal for the first Ironman? Yeah, I mean, I emphasize just within this um, the example of a goal for an improver being the on the same course. If uh, triathlons courses are so variable, the different terrains, the different locations, and uh, different distances that we're talking about, so you need to have a, a level playing comparable to make it realistic in in itself. That's the realistic aspect of the goal structure, and um, we you're absolutely right. They're now starting to train to train to perform, and they want so they want to get quicker, so they're going to perform quicker. And how do we do that? Well, we actually start to look at the elements of fitness within the improver. And as a coach, I would want to have the confidence that they're going to be able to survive a, a 10K fartlek session or a 50, uh, 12K track session um, before the Olympic distance that they're running at. And I would start off with a benchmark, with the with uh, benchmarking my, my improvers uh the before they start upon that towards that goal that program in particular so i make sure that they are in the condition the current condition not only mentally but also physically to be able to work that towards that goal and what's an example of a good goal for the advanced athlete so the uh, good uh, an example for the uh advanced athlete qualifying for the 70.3 worlds at ironman wales Uh, sorry, I'm 70.3, not that I'm in Wales. Um, so Staffordshire, um, the UK Staffordshire 70.3, uh, Dubai 70.3. Uh, you specifically not only just qualifying for worlds, but the actual race that you're going to qualify at to go to worlds. And do you want to specify which year or can it be 30 years from now? Uh, you could do, but however, um, the, the, periodization um for different athletes uh if we're talking an advanced athlete obviously the olympic cycle is over a four-year period so you could actually be if you have an olympian athlete that you're coaching they actually start on a six-year program and you have certain criteria to meet before you go to that most of our listeners unfortunately guys i don't mean to disappoint you but you won't be going to tokyo uh, most of our listeners <laughs> however if you still wanting to look to qualify for example we've just had chattanooga which was the 70.3 world championships if you want to qualify for next year which is uh south africa 70.3 you now have that ability to to go to the races between and book in and these races fill up very quickly so you have to have a long-term plan I would say a year in advance is, is is ideal, but you're already at that starting foundation of fitness from the intermediate um, athletes approach. And that discussion about the Olympic cycle and potentially even being on a six-year program for not the next Olympics, but uh, the Olympics after that, is that something that the advanced athlete or any athlete really can apply with their long-term goal? Because we've been talking about long-term and short-term goals and In that case, what do you think about if you have one long-term goal, how, how how far out can it be for the non-Olympic athlete, but an advanced or improver or beginner athlete? And how do you balance that with having enough short-term goals that come in the interim before that long-term goal? That's a great question. Someone asked me when I was uh, racing on the on the Ironman circuit, 
And they said to me, how many Ironmans do you think you could do in a year fast, obviously competing wise? Remember, we're talking about competitors at this advanced level. And um, if you look at the guys who have qualified for Kona this year, uh, which is coming up in, in, in a few weeks time, uh, two weeks time, the, they have gone out and got the points that they need to be racing and they've raced they have to turn up fit and sharp for those races so this is over just a nine month period they start to earn kona points from kona if you're there but kind of january up to up to october um although they cut off the points so you're only talking about a six month period to get enough points so these guys are racing three ironmans at the most and kona on top of that so now let's bring that back down to a little bit more of our, our levels on the, on the listener's side of things. If you, I've got an athlete that I coach in Cyprus who is looking at doing Ironman Austria in 2019. So we're 2017 now, and that's a two-year goal. Great. That's a smart goal because I know where he's at and I know what he's been doing. He's done Italy 70.3 this year, and um, next year he's doing Dubai and Switzerland 70.3 and then he's doing a marathon actually in in Athens in a couple of in uh, in November this year. So this is a real it's a realistic goal, it's a smart goal, but it's 2 years time, but we don't focus on that now. We're not implementing that into the periodization. The periodization will go up to a maximum of 12 months. In that 12 month period, we would be looking at what I call A, B and C races. And the emphasis upon those checkpoints. So if an A race is your, for example, this gentleman's doing a 70.3 Dubai next year and Switzerland. So those would be both A races that he's looking at. The C races would be something that we would be going into uh, a standalone half marathon. We'd go and do a half marathon elsewhere, but we'd still want to perform. But bearing in mind that we're not too close to Dubai being our key race. And then... Uh, the C race would be a training event um, where we may in training do a, a shortened half or uh, an Olympic distance triathlon. So we're looking at that specific type stuff. This is what I do as a job. And this is what um, uh, coaches do. Once they've got that goal, they then put it in within the periodization of, of the 12, of the 12 month program in particular. Um, the, the books, the Bibles out there will tell you that periodization is a very interesting thing to look into and you can, you can, uh, the body can get bored of repeating too many, too many A races, too many, trying to hit that too many times. Yes, if you're doing sprint distance triathlons, you could have four or five or six A, A, A races over the season. Um, however, if you do four or five or six races within four or five, six weeks, it's um, periodically or um, calendar wise one after the other this is a lot more challenging for the coach to be looking at that aspect so do you think that there is a maximum number of months out or years out that you can have a short-term goal and a maximum number of uh, interim goals that you can have Sure, I, I would talk about the the beginner and the the intermediate. Uh, sorry, the improver athlete. You're looking at six months. Um, six months as a minimum period of time for you to be able to physically get yourself uh, ready and what's required to to, to take part in that uh, that event or to achieve that goal to be successful with your goal. A six month minimum period. Um, however, with the improver. I would also add in that you'd be looking at interim short-term goals and making the uh, making sure that you're you're on target to get to that um, goal, which your main goal, which is in six months' time. For example, I want to get stronger on my bike, so therefore you would be doing a um, maybe you do a trainer road program throughout the winter, and you would reassess your FTP or your threshold heart rate, and that would show that you've improved your strength on the bike. But that's nowhere near your A race. So that's an interim focus that you'd be looking at with an improver. The advanced side, side of things, I would say that this your your long term goal is, as we discussed, six to four years, sorry, six months to four years, maybe even six years, as we're talking about that Olympic type cycle in particular. And also still having those interim 
short-term goals, more short-term goals, so that we're able to give the athlete that confidence of, I know I'm in good position, I know I'm strong. You hear athletes saying, I'm fit, I'm strong, I'm ready to race. And that's a really good feedback comment that we get from uh, to, as a coach. And one interesting discussion that we had about goal setting was uh, taking it too far and mixing in actions with the actual outcomes and, and goals that you want to have. So what happens there and, and how is that detrimental maybe for, for what you do and how you develop as a triathlete? A lot of people out there have overcomplicated um, their, their goal setting. Um, I, I used to, when I, when I was, uh, qualifying as a coach, it's one of the modules within, uh, within our, within a coaching qualification, which is goal setting. And I, I struggled as that, uh, as goal setting because I was, I was at that time an athlete and I was developing to become a coach. And it's very difficult to put yourself into those different types of what I call those different hats, those different roles. Uh, with uh, certainly now, I'm a, <laughs> I, I'm, I've got an athlete's hat, a coach's hat. I'm also a, a coach educator in the past for the past eight years with British Triathlon. So I'm a tutor and an assessor. So different different positions, different roles will give you different focuses for writing your goal setting. As a coach, we set it as a session based. So at the end of the session, we hope to achieve. When we're writing for an individual program, we're looking at that session. It's still what are we trying to achieve for our athlete, but bearing in mind the long-term goal of the athletes that we've agreed with them at the beginning of, of, of the year or of the season in particular, of the training season. So keep it simple. Keep it very direct so that we know we can come back to it and refer to it on a regular basis and actually say, the goal's in sight. The goal is in sight. You're there. You're feeling ready to race. Let's go. You're feeling ready to go and complete this distance in particular. Look at also, try not to, uh, we, we, as you say, we talked about it quite a bit. Don't associate the goal with actions. And uh, what, what we, uh, we, 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 were trying to, we were trying to think of a really good uh, example of this. And, uh, a really good bad example. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, a really bad example of, of this, but it would, it would give us a chance to focus on it. You want to qualify for Kona as a goal. 2018, I want to qualify for Kona 2018 uh, by increasing my strength on the bike over the winter strength and conditioning and working with working on my swim technique into the early parts of 2018 a specific goal a simple direct goal would have been i want to qualify at kona 2018 for next year at the race at barcelona ironman in one week's time because obviously that rolls over for next year's qualification that would have been a, a very simple and direct goal for what I'm trying to achieve, not by adding in these actions of how we're going to achieve that goal. And we've called them actions because that's an action point and that's you're actioning that to achieve that goal. So my increasing my strength on the bike, that's an action. Strength and conditioning, working on swim technique, uh, all sorts of aspects like that, um, learning to run better with a better form. Those are actions to be able to get through your, your, your training to get to that end result and that goal in particular. Mm, yeah, and that's uh, really great not to associate the, or really great that you talk about that and, and help the listeners understand the difference between those outcomes that you're looking for that would be qualified for Kona and the actions that may lead you there but the point here is that when you set that goal you may not necessarily know what the best route to that goal is it might not be it might not be that you need to increase your strength on the bike or become a better runner maybe it's just that you've been pacing incorrectly on the bike and that's why you've been running poorly in previous ironmans and you are actually capable of running much better for example so having those actions they cause additional constraints i guess on the on the goals so uh, i think that's about it for the goal setting discussion and finally we want to talk a little bit about tips for the self-coached athlete because a lot of the listeners are obviously self-coached and that is 
usually when you start out you are self-coached and as we talked about in last episode beginners are usually self-coached but when the top tips that you gave for the improving and especially for the advanced athlete was to uh, look into coaching and uh, and getting a the structure of your program and and all those sorts of things but for the ones that are self-coached what do you think is uh, the things that they must keep in mind to have a successful athletic career let's start right at the beginning i asked you uh, um, a few minutes ago um what's your goal i asked you to think about what your actual goal is and um and, and say it out loud or say it to yourself so if you haven't got a goal and you are self-coached log a goal physically write it down put it on your diary put it in on your computer put it as your screensaver um have it as a mantra almost your goal there and this kind of is a stepping stone towards making it accountable. Yes, um, it's more accountable if you have a coach, but on this occasion, we're self-coached. So say it to yourself, write it down. Don't just have it in your head in particular. And maybe even mention it to your training buddies or um, your physio or your um, uh, your if you have a, an independent sports coach, then, then just mention it to someone that you... Um, hold high in in your progression and in your sports in particular then i like to look at uh the aspects of working back from your goal so s- write down your goal put it down there put your date draw up a timeline back from that goal so each month however you're gonna uh what we call mi- micro cycling or macro cycles uh try look at monthly what are you going to do within that month to be able to achieve that goal and then put your benchmarks in place so have an interim benchmark uh the, one of the best benchmarks that you can do out there to show progression certainly this is more within the advanced athletes or the improving athletes who are looking at self coaching i would suggest that you have a, a form of a test that you can repeatedly test yourself we talk about ftps functional threshold power um, also heart rate threshold heart rates uh, tests and um, uh, the css critical swim speed um, uh, or t100 as it used to be known out there look at your look at these different types of benchmark tests that you can intermittently um, intermediately put within that timeline and when are you going to do that in particular Test your progression, as I mentioned, um, with a benchmark. Um, and then you need to look at adjusting your program accordingly. So adjust it as you go through. So this is why those who are coached out there, this is why it's really important to keep that catch up, to keep that feedback going to the coach so that he can adjust, he or she, excuse me, can adjust your program accordingly at different um, uh, interim periods so that you are maybe you're just drifting off that journey towards that end goal you need to come back on and refocus really really important to uh, assess that um uh, periodically as well um and you may need to revisit your goal so you that's why i say write it down put it somewhere that you actually can revisit it rather than oh what was my goal again i can't remember was it this and maybe you've actually built in originally some action points within that target goal So you need to think about how can I remove those actions or those are your interim benchmarks and you can check them off and remove it out of your your fundamental goal in in particular. We we talked about how how you can do catch-ups with your coach, but how can you do a catch-up with yourself? We'll be very blinkered. We'll be very, um, I don't know if dishonest is the right words, on feedback, self-evaluation um it's it's very hard we're very quick to um to praise ourselves rather than actually find a negative aspect as human beings uh, within our training and we may be very blinkered as i keep referring to so look at a self reflection self evaluation aspect and uh, there's three fundamental questions that you can ask yourself the first one is what went well now i don't mean that just for um, a race or an event or one of the benchmarks i'm talking about almost every session after every single training session and maybe a breakthrough session in particular um, you can ask yourself what went well 
And then also ask yourself what didn't go so well. So that's what went well and what didn't go so well. And then we're also talking um, on the self-reflection. The third one would be looking at what would you do differently next time? Really, really important to look at that aspect of, of that self-evaluation. Without that self-evaluation, we would just keep going. We would just keep going. We would stick to the program and we would keep going. We wouldn't ha- be able to change anything within the program. And if you haven't got that knowledge of writing a session or how do I improve my speed, how do I improve my strength, my stamina, I'd really encourage you to uh, not only listen to these podcasts with invited guests on here, but also read some blogs, read some books out there. Don't be afraid. You don't have to go on a coaching course or to a convention to learn about the elements of fitness. It's The World Wide Web has got all of that information there. But this is where the fundamental errors happen within self-coaching is that you haven't evaluated, you don't know your progression, and you can't adjust your program, your training program, session by session, session for session, without that knowledge of what am I actually doing here? What am I improving? What am I trying to improve? Because not only did you not know whether you have improved <laughs> through no evaluation, but you also don't know whether that, pr- that session should have improved your fitness or your speed and how long it will take to do that. So review this all paradoxically, your training program, self-evaluation as well. I keep mentioning that because it's really important to get yourself feedback. Work from a template or from scratch as well. Um, now, we, once again, we, we kind of did discuss this before the podcast recording. And it's, it's really, we, fundamentally, we're talking about a beginner athlete will, will go out and just look at completing the distance. Uh, for their for their triathlon then the improver comes in and you may have the improver may have followed a a magazine program to complete the distance so a lot of uh, articles out there uh, provide you with a free program some events a lot of the marathons actually give you or half marathons give you a free program to follow when you register with them there's nothing wrong with them but just remember that this phrase that I've recently been posting on my Facebook with Paradise Try about is that one size doesn't fit all. And what I mean by that is just be careful that this has been this has not been written for you as an individual. So you're going through the avenues of becoming a, from a beginner to a, an improver and you're going to be self-coached. So start from where you have the knowledge and your experience. Don't try and stretch yourself. Um, this could be a template program. This could be one of those programs that you did, that you used last season from a website, from from a free article or anything of the sort from a race. And just be careful that it's not necessarily going to give you a better result than when you were trying to complete. But as I say, you need to look at adjusting that. You could use that template and adjust that accordingly. Just be careful. I, I really must stress that out there to be really, really cautious um, on on adjusting a templated program. However, start from where your knowledge is. If you don't have that knowledge, then I would really hold back. You may even get an in, an improvers program a templated already written out there, and you can follow that in particular. Um, or Go and have a chat with a coach. Go and meet up with a coach. Certainly, I know that, um, well, I, I, I provide consultation. Um, and so if you're writing your, yourself coached and you want to air out your program for the, the 12 months or for a build up towards a goal, a uh, goal race, target race, then, um, you certainly can, uh, book an appointment with myself over Skype and we can discuss that. Um, program and to see whether it's on the smart structure towards your goal. The, most recently, we've seen a lot of um, unqualified, um, unexperienced um, people on these social media groups. And I've, I've tagged it as um, uh, what I call social media coaching. Be very, very weary, wary of what is going on with um, people who are sharing their experiences 
on the groups. There's nothing wrong, necessarily wrong with, with, the, with them or with it, but it was a program that was written for them. And most definitely do not copy someone else's program. Um, so, for example, if Mikel is receiving a program from me, um, I'm not, uh, he's not going to get so and so, his training buddy coming in to, and using is exactly the same program as Mikel's. I would really emphasize that that falls under um, it, it can be a, it could be a, uh, quite a, a serious injury or in, or incident that would take place on that aspect. Have you just out of curiosity? Do you think that it's uh, it's common that uh, athletes uh, use their training buddies program that they maybe have had custom made for them because it's uh, something that for me seems very so, some something that's not really you wouldn't think of because it's so something that's individually made for somebody else completely that has completely different abilities than you maybe or at least a different goal or whatever it is. There are so many variables there that may make make it dangerous for you so but do you think that it's common that it happens i think it's more the the ignorance of the individuals that they don't have an understanding of what the implication could be they don't they think they can get away with it um so yes i do think it happens out there i wouldn't be mentioning if if i didn't um and um it it's i'll leave it in the hands or the the minds of those who have either done it or who who do it um but i don't think it's it's on on the masses i i as you say people are very triathlon is the most sociable individual sport that you can take part in and um if someone's if i'm being coached by someone i certainly wouldn't share my program with i would i wouldn't have the time to um be able to share that program with someone else and you wouldn't get be covered on that bespoke um level achieving that same goal or that particular avenue okay so just to wrap it up with the tips for self-coaching i noted them down here while we were talking and it's uh log your goal and work backwards from it and do a self-reflection or evaluation after pretty much every single session what went well what didn't go well and what could you do differently and also review periodically on uh, maybe when you check your progression towards those interim goals that you have towards your big main goal. Also increasing your knowledge of the elements of fitness and how to structure a program and so on, maybe through reading books. I can uh, recommend a couple. I think that uh, Joe Friel's uh, The Triathlete's Training Bible is a great one to start with because it will teach you the fundamentals of what you need to know and also Matt Dixon's uh, two books the second one is just about to be released and we just had him on the show to talk about that but so i haven't read that yet but i'm sure it will be great and also his first book the well-built triathlete was very good and taking into account also things like nutrition and recovery and so on that you need to know as a self-coach athlete because they might not be evident to you and uh, be wary of social media coaching and do not copy somebody else's program. So those were the things that we covered here for the self-coached athlete. And finally, for uh, people that uh, may be interested in coaching, uh, do you mind, Simon, telling the listeners a little bit about your coaching? Yeah, sure. Um, so certainly if you are on Facebook, uh, you can um, find uh, Paradise Triathlon Training, um, it, the logo of an orange clock, neon clock. Um, or you can find me on Facebook as Simon Brierley. And um, also you could email me at simon at paradise try, that's T R I dot co dot UK. And uh, one announcement that we, we are going to make here as well is that uh, uh, Simon and I are going to uh, actually launch a new coaching project i guess you could call it or, or what what do you want to, to call it simon is project a good word um a, a package available to um someone who would be able who, who would see themselves uh utilizing it's a unique package it's a unique project um and uh you certainly will hear a lot more about it in the in the coming future uh yeah yeah so so the fate what what we are intending to do is to Essentially, you would have two coaches. Maybe one would be the main coach, but me and Simon would have discussions every week about each athlete's progress, and that would help us remove our cognitive biases as coaches and 
help us keep each other accountable to produce our best possible work for you as an athlete so it would would be essentially a freeway conversation with also the both the one that has the main responsibility for you and the other coach participating in some of those catch-ups even though the main coach may take most of the catch-ups but but having that extra uh, that extra coach that adds one plus one in this case i would say equals three because you you get that extra accountability as a coach to another coach to to do your best work and uh, and that, that i think is what we want to bring across and try to make this we want to provide like really premium coaching and su- coaching support to to you to help you achieve your goals so we don't have anything really formalized yet so i think that the best way is probably to uh, send me or simon an email if you are interested in this uh, and want to learn more so that would be simon at paradise uk or michael at scientific triathlon.com and michael is with a k so uh, if you are interested in that be sure to shoot us uh, an email and simon before we wrap up this interview i have a few rapid fire questions for you and I will start with what's your favorite book, blog, or resource related, related to triathlon? And uh, these are rapid fire questions, Simon. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I live in Norwich in Norfolk, and I have worked in the past very much closely with um, uh, James Dunn, who you had as a guest on the show, uh, episodes 45. 45. Um, I, the Kinetic Revolution has revolutionized my uh, own knowledge of running and my own ability of running and I do put down a lot of my success for um, certainly my running side of things um, down to the support that James done and some of the podcasts and blogs and vlogs that he does and produces there yeah I couldn't agree more what's your favorite piece of gear or equipment my Garmin what Garmin do you have uh, 920 XT that's the same as I got. It's a good one, definitely. Although it's uh, going out of fashion with many triathletes these days, having a few years on its neck. Finally, what do you wish you had known or wish you had done differently at some point in your triathlon or coaching career? So uh, I'll, I'll keep the answer short. Uh, access to coaching resources and um, certainly coaches themselves. When I was a junior uh, living in Africa and Zimbabwe, um, I shared a lane with the likes of Paula Newby Fraser as a, as a, as my early childhood, um, uh, role model. And, um, we didn't have any coaches then we had probably swim, bike and run coaches then and resources, the resources like training peaks, which uh, is a great platform for, um, us as coaches to, to support our athletes. Um, The internet was probably just being generated. I'm not going back too far, but living in Africa, we were behind times as well. So resources and coaches. Thank you. And once again, if listeners want to learn more about you, it's Paradise Try on Facebook. What's the exact uh, handle on Facebook? So it's Paradise Triathlon Training. And uh, your email is simon at paradisetry.co.uk. And we'll have those linked up in the show notes, of course. Is there anything else you wanted to mention before we end this interview? Uh, no, it's been a privilege to be here and um, to spend some time with yourself, Mikel. And uh, um, listeners, just keep listening to these podcasts because you can certainly learn a lot from it. Thank you for the, the invite. Thank you. It was great to have you. And this has been Simon Briarley from Paradise, Paradise Triathlon Training. And uh, we are now going to go and prepare for a long day of swim running tomorrow. 42 case of running and 10 case of swimming or something like that. So, uh, yeah, I guess we should uh, go and start carb loading. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed that discussion between myself and Simon. It was uh, really great to have that discussion with Simon, obviously part one as well leading up to it and all the other great discussions we had over several days when preparing for and and racing in the all and swim run. So great to have uh, in-depth chats about coaching, triathlon training and so on with, with somebody like Simon. Thank you, Simon, again for your time and for coming over. It was uh, really, really good. A great week and a great time. And uh, just a few things that I want to make clear about the coaching package that we just announced. 
we kind of were thinking that this is sort of a VIP coaching. And that doesn't mean that you need to be a super advanced triathlete. By no means does it mean that. But it, it means that you want to take your coach-athlete relationship to another level and really get the most out of it. Again, I keep coming back to this that one plus one does not equal two in this case it equals three or even more because me and simon will be holding each other accountable we will be having these discussions weekly about what is best for each athlete even though each athlete will have their own assigned head responsible coach so to say but we will still get to for each athlete bounce ideas off each other hold each other accountable learn from each other and really have these in-depth discussions about what should we do for each athlete's program so that we can, through the compound effect really, if your program is 3 or 5% better every week than after, after one year, then how much better are you compared to where you would have been without those in-depth discussions and this VIP coaching with actually two coaches taking a very dedicated interest in your training so that that's the main benefit then other things that we'll have we will make use of the best training analysis software wko for best bike split hrv for training and of course training peaks that we both use and this will all be included in the coaching package of course we will also have access to premium camps just for our own coached athletes in Portugal, very likely, since I'll be moving there. And also even access to visits. We can come and visit you if uh, you want to. And that, that's not something that's necessarily included in the coaching package, but you can have access to book those visits. So we want to really make this a VIP coaching service. That's the unique value proposition of, of this coaching package. So again, if you're interested, email us at michael at scientifictriathlon.com. That's Michael with a K. Or simon at paradisetry.co.uk. Or you can go to our website, which is scientifictriathlon.com forward slash VIP coaching. Again, that's scientifictriathlon.com forward slash VIP coaching. And you can register your interest there and learn more. Because as I said, we don't have the details sorted out yet. We want this to be driven by you, what you really need and want. And it's not something that we list out a billion bullet points of this is what you'll get uh, and get all sleazy and salesy. But rather, we want this to be driven by how we can best get you the best possible results in your triathlon improvements that's our north star with this vip coaching package on the next episode of that triathlon show i will talk about seven big mistakes that beginner triathletes make so make sure that you tune in for that as always thank you so very much for listening i really appreciate you tuning in every monday and thursday keep training smart and keep loving triathlon